So we're going to start with, with some fun sort of diagrams of framing uh, the, the area of, of research regulated data. Uh, many of us uh, work in either central offices or in central administrative systems that are often well protected by uh, central IT resources. Um, our accounting systems, our databases that manage HR data are often protected with some pretty good security controls because they're in central IT shops generally who have a lot of folks who are dedicated to databases and security and all sorts of very focused uh, IT support. So we're used to those controls just being in place and being innate and part of it. You know, there's people who help block phishing scams on our emails for us, and those things are just part of the services that most central units provide. However, in the area of research, many of us, uh, depending on your institutional uh, sort of structure, the faculty are out there with their own computers, their own laptops, sometimes their own little terabyte hard drives they bought it at Best Buy, uh, and those exist all over throughout campus. Many times the data that our faculty are, are collecting or uh, receiving for their research are housed outside of what we call enterprise controls. Those are faculty that you know, just get data sets by email and, and the computers aren't necessarily secured to the same level of protection that information in our central IT systems are. Generally, this may or may not be a problem. Uh, but the problem starts to exist when that data turns from very basic publicly available what we call green data, things that are not of risk, things that are, that are not uh, sensitive, that are not greatly of proprietary interest to third parties, but start to become a little bit more uh, sensitive, things that maybe shouldn't be shared with everyone on websites, maybe things that folks walking around in laboratories shouldn't see 100% of. And then there's another set that really either by regulation or law or contract says you must not disclose these things. So uh, when those items are floating out with our faculty, they start to be a little bit more of concern. And I think that's where when hackers hit the system, we start to be a little more scared. Um, if they start to attempt to access central systems, we expect that our HR data and our financial systems and all of those information elements are protected by our central IT support. But what happens when they attack sort of the faculty in the distributed uh, locations? Some of them, uh, they may have local protections in place. Some departments may have great servers, uh, but there's risk that those are not protected to the same degree that we would like. So that's the problem today is how do we put the similar controls that you may or may not have or more controls around these distributed sort of research programs that historically in many areas have not been protected, how do we put a very, very regulated set of controls around those computers, around those databases, around those machines, around the information. And again, we're still talking about information. We know most information is stored electronically now, but there is certainly still physical copies of reports and things that, are, that would fall into this realm. As we move forward, we, just, uh, we thought it was important to, to frame the, the types of data um, and, and the reason why it's so difficult for many of us to encounter this is the distributed nature of all that we are trying to protect.